there. Well, speaking of the SEC, have you ever wondered how the conference got its start? We are heading to good old Rocky Top to find out. Yeah, our reporter Jared Austin has a story dating 90 years back. The year is 1932. A gallon of gas cost 10 cents. A streetcar could get you up and down Gay Street. Shield Watkins Field was a lot smaller than it is today. And the landscape of college sports was about to change forever. And they just felt like that was going to be a conference of the time, and it has proven to be that. Teams in the Southern Conference at the time wanted out, so schools met at the Farragut Hotel on Gay Street, now the Hyatt Place. There are concerns about geography. Um, when you eventually have the SEC split, all 13 teams south of the Appalachian region join the SEC. The 10 remaining teams that are north stay in the Southern Conference. A day later at the Andrew Johnson Hotel, also on Gay Street, the Southeastern Conference was formed. It included traditional SEC schools, Tennessee, Alabama, and Vanderbilt, along with short-term members Swanee, Georgia Tech, and Tulane. An influential leader who helped create it all is former UT Athletics Chairman Nathan Darty. He's in the College Football Hall of Fame. He played here at Tennessee. His main thing that Nathan Darty did was hire General Neyland as a football assistant football coach. He was involved greatly with the building of Neyland Stadium. While the new conference had majority approval from university leadership, it wasn't well liked by local newspapers. They say that the Southeastern Conference, you know, is seething with politicians, Tennessee is among them. It's almost like they don't see the SEC schools as gentlemen, I think is one of the quotes that's used. The conference would become a college football powerhouse and draw national attention. Since being established, people could listen to SEC games on the radio, and years later, a nationally televised game of the week. In my mind, that had a great influence on broadening the base of the Southeastern Conference, because you could get the CBS game, California, Washington, wherever it is. Tennessee has a pretty deep history in the SEC. They played in the conference's first ever televised game in 1951, started the SEC's first black quarterback, Condridge Holloway, even long-lasting traditions came together, checkering the end zone, Smokey the mascot, and the Vol Navy. It truly is a unique and charming dimension of football at UT. We can't forget about the six national championships. A 1951 Cotton Bowl victory belongs to the Vols, and the first ever BCS championship in 98. The conference may have a new home in Birmingham, Alabama these days, but good old Rocky Top will always be home sweet home to the Southeastern Conference.